Letting go of every single dream I lay each one down at your feet Every moment of my wandering Never changes what you see I've tried to win this war, I confess My hands are weary, I need your rest Mighty warrior, king of the fight No matter what I face, you're by my side When you don't move the mountains I'm needing you to move When you don't part the waters I wish I could walk through When you don't give the answers As I cry out to you I will trust, I will trust I will trust in you to you today on this, the first Sunday of Lent. There is a special announcement that I want to highlight for you today. Um, I don't know that I have too many of them in front of you. Um, You'll see there's been a half-sheet flyer that's been given out on behalf of Lutheran World Relief. I'm glad to tell you that's actually now old information, and there's a significant update. Instead of matching gifts up to $100,000, with the deadline being... Uh, in just a little bit time, March 15th. Instead now, the, the matching gifts cap is $238,000, and the deadline is April 25th. So, um, a little bit later today, <clears throat> I'll be uh, hopefully able to pass out a little more information about how you can make a donation to Lutheran World Relief uh, on behalf of the people of Ukraine, and I'll be talking about that a little bit more in the homily time and the sermon time this morning. So... With that, I invite you please to turn inside the front cover of your red hymnal and rising, please face the cross at the back of the church for the brief order of confession and forgiveness. 
we gather now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Dear friends, we read in 1 John that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us, but if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sin and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for Jesus' sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join in our gathering song this morning. There's a place where mercy reigns and never dies. There's a place where streams of grace flow deep and wide. Where all the love I've ever found Comes like a flood, comes flowing down At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life I'm in awe of you I'm in awe of you, where your love ran red, and my sin washed white. I owe all to you, I owe all to you, Jesus. There's a place. Sin and shame are powerless. There, my heart has peace with God and forgiveness. Where all the Never found comes like a flood, comes flowing down at the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life, I'm in awe of you, I'm in awe of you.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, how can we begin even to think of repaying you for all that you have done? The debt that you have forgiven, O oh Lord, is so great that we cannot even count it. But you, O oh Lord, in your great love for us and for all humanity, have washed us clean from our sin and have made us as white as snow. O oh Lord, watch over and lead us now until you take us finally at last to that place of our heavenly home. For we ask all of these things in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 26. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all your fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land of the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in the office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make his, this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Armenian was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toll, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power, and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the beauty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. The word of the Lord. Please join in a responsive prayer of Psalm 91. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Amen. The second reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 10. The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. 
The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority. For it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took Jesus to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you. And on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from the Lord until an opportune time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite all the kids to come forward this morning. If you've got a phone with you, a cell phone, please bring it forward. Or if you want to borrow a phone from your parents, bring that forward too, please. All right. Oh, look at this. Look who's calling me right now. Huh? Come on up, guys. Todd Otkin. Right? Hello, Mr. Otkin. Can you hear me? Hey, good morning. Say hello to all your friends here at St. John's Lutheran Church. Good morning. He says good morning. All right, I'll see you later. All right, see, what's the first thing you notice about when someone calls you on the phone, right? What's the first thing you notice? Okay, but what pops up on your screen? All right, if I go to my recents, right? What pops up on your screen when somebody calls you? Their name, right? Their name. You know, there was a time when you didn't know who was calling on the phone, right? And so you, you, just, you just picked up the phone. It might be a surprise who was calling, right? You never knew who was going to be on the other end of the line. But today we look and we say, oh, that's my friend Todd Otkin. I better take that call, right? right? It's not, he's not a robocaller or spam or something like that. Well, the Lord Jesus says, call upon me, because he never fails to take your phone call, right? He never sends it in to auto-reject or sends a message, call me back later, right? He always answers, right? There is salvation in Jesus' name, and he always, well, you might say he always picks up the phone. And do you think that when you call out to Jesus, Right? Luke, do you think when you, if you were to actually place a phone call to heaven, I'm not sure how that would happen, right? And let's imagine for just a moment that Jesus has a cell phone in his hand up in heaven, right? Would he need to look down and see that it was Luke calling, or would he just kind of know that it was you? I imagine that he would know that it was you. He wouldn't even need caller ID to know that you were calling, would he, right? That that's how deeply God loves you because that's how much God knows you, right? God has your name, you know, the name that your parents picked out for you when you were a baby in the hospital, right? God knew your name before your parents knew your name. Isn't that an amazing thing? God has your name written on the very palm of his hand indelibly, like tattooed. Your name. 
Isn't that wonderful? So when you call, when you call out to the Lord, when you say, God, I'm having a really bad day. God, I'm sad. Or when you have something wonderful that you just want to share with God, right? When you pray to God, when you call out to Jesus, whether it's just in the quiet of your mind, not even using your words, when you just think it, or when you speak a prayer out loud like with your family, or maybe if you pray at bedtime, God hears you, right? He answers your call. And there is salvation in Jesus' name. He is always eager. He never rejects, right? Never goes into, he never says, decline that call, right? He always answers and he always listens to you. Isn't that wonderful? He knows when you're going to call to him. Would you fold your hands, please, and we'll say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for always hearing us, for listening to us, for answering us, for being so quick to know that we are calling out to you. Oh Lord, we ask that you bless all of these children, their families, help them grow strong, be with them every day, and strengthen them, not just in spirit, but in body and mind and heart and soul too, and watch over them and all their families. Help them to have a great week this week at school, and bless them with all of their classmates. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, everybody. You can go back to your seats. Appreciate you coming forward. <clears throat> Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus our Savior who answers immediately when we call out to him, even if we sometimes have difficulty hearing and understanding. Amen. If you're about 45 years old or older, you'll remember an old Garth Brooks song, Sometimes I Thank God for Unanswered Prayers. Terrible song, I hate it. Right? It's a catchy tune, I can't get it out of my head. God always answers our prayers. God always hears us when we lift up our voices. Sometimes God simply says no. Sometimes God says yes. Sometimes God says wait or I have something else in mind. You know all of that. That's really not what I wanted to talk to you about today. <clears throat> but I thought that probably was a good way for us to begin. Um, I have a few things that I want to lift up for you today, and so I'll try to be fairly succinct and move expeditiously uh, because they're a little bit disjointed, so I'll try not to uh, take too much of your time today. I do invite you, please, to take, you've all received one of these in the mail at home if you're on the mailing list for St. John's Lutheran Church, the Lenten devotional written by our catechism students. Uh, we do invite you to grab an extra one for a friend or a family member maybe who hasn't gotten one before. Send it off in the mail. We realize that we're already a few days uh, into Lent, but the devotionals that the students have written really are a true blessing. And we're going to be using this devotional for the Wednesday night worship services um, to lead us through the season of Lent. So please take one. They're all over the church. Uh, if you can't find one, just ask, and we'll help you uh, get one. The next thing that I want to talk to you about, and I want to make a special invitation that you would come back uh, next Sunday to hear Pastor Tim Crick, who's going to be visiting with us. He'll be leading worship, that is, he'll be preaching uh, and he's from Lutheran World Relief. He'll be telling you about the overall ministry of Lutheran World Relief, of course, and the different efforts that they're undertaking throughout the world. But he'll also be speaking specifically about the efforts that Lutheran World Relief is undertaking in Ukraine right now. And uh, while that flyer that you have handed out by the ushers, thank you, uh, gentlemen, um, it, it's old information because as I mentioned at the beginning of the service, I got an email here just on Friday that these two congregations, Nelsonville Lutheran Church and also Peace Lutheran in uh, Amherst, Wisconsin, that they have increased their invitation for matching gifts from $100,000 to $258,000. So in other words, they pledged $129,000 to be matched by any monies that you or other Lutheran congregations participating in this effort through Lutheran World Relief. So this is an email that I have. It's going to be sent out to everybody uh, uh, tomorrow morning again, and it specifies the number of ways that you can make a donation if you would like to do so. And of course, it's matched 
up to, gosh, a little bit more than a quarter of a million dollars. I also want to say uh, from this email, you know, it's, sometimes we overlook those things in church life that we are just accustomed to doing all of the time. Uh, every week, uh, there's a bunch of quilting ladies that come and they, if I'm not mistaken, they come on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and they sit downstairs outside the choir room Uh, They have this beautiful room and they quilt and they quilt and they sometimes invite me down for cookies and uh, tea in case I were to waste away to nothing. That's always their concern. But there's a special uh, thank you here in Pastor Crick's email, particularly for the quilters and for those who have ever made health kits. If you've ever helped assemble a health kit or a school kit on behalf of Lutheran World Relief, Uh, Pastor Crick wants to say a special thank you because those go to people in need the world over. Right now, in the city of Dubai, right, over in the Middle East, they have literally tens if not hundreds of thousands of health kits and quilts that are staged and going to be released to, um, to Ukraine for aid and help. And so we say thank you. So that's the second thing that I wanted to highlight for you today. Now, if you were to turn, if you were to look at your uh, flyer, please, and notice Psalm 91. Go ahead and just grab your flyer, if you would, for a moment. I won't belabor the point too much, but look at Psalm 91 for a moment. You'll notice that the middle portions of, you guys don't have flyers. Connor, would you go back and grab three of the flyers? Just go back on the side aisle there. Grab three of the flyers, right, so that you guys can look at Psalm 91 also. Sometimes, uh, typically for the purpose of, um, uh, sometimes, we, we, sometimes the Revised Common Lectionary cuts out uh, a portion of a reading of Scripture. As you can see, the middle portion of Psalm 91 is cut out today. Oftentimes, that's just uh, uh, reduplicated material, and so in the interest of time, uh, maybe something is, is left out of a reading. Other times, uh, the committee perhaps worries Uh, that a pastor might not be able to speak in a small amount of time to a topic or a subject that is particularly challenging or difficult and would require a more lengthy explanation. Um, But those are usually the primary reasons why you have uh, a portion of Scripture omitted in the middle of a reading on any given Sunday morning. But I think you'll understand with what's happening in the world today in Ukraine and... um, that uh, we have a a specific encouragement and that anyone who hears these words would have an extra measure of hope and strength if we include the middle portion of Psalm 91. And so I'm going to begin with verse 1. And uh, you can see, if I'm not mistaken, it's verses 1, 2, and uh, 1 and 2, maybe 3. I forget off the top of my head, but bear with me here. So beginning with verse 1. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. God is our very present refuge. God is a fortress to us. I'll say more about that in a moment. Beginning with verse 3. If, there's, a, there's Bibles in the pews, of course. If you want to take one of the pew Bibles and look at Psalm 91 to see these inner portions, you're welcome to do that, of course. But beginning again with verse 3, For God will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence from disease. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. I had to look up for a moment, what's a pinion? I used to think that the pinions of a bird were like the talons of an eagle, right? But it's not, in fact. The pinions of a bird are the outer feathers of the wings, the flight feathers. So here you see something that's very important for you to understand about the Psalms and about Scripture generally. When you hear a phrase that is then repeated, right? The feathers, the pinions, and the feathers of the wings, it is a heightening of this idea. So God covers you with his wings. God surrounds you in the protection of his feathers. The psalmist at one point also says, God, you watch over Jerusalem like a mother hen cares for her chicks. So whenever you see a reduplication, that's a heightening of the idea. We'll come to it again in just a moment's time. 
Uh, he will cover you under his wings and you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. His faithfulness, God's faithfulness, right? So with verse 5, you will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day or the pestilence, the disease that stalks in the darkness or the destruction that wastes at the noonday. You know, when I was a child growing up in the Cold War, Right? World War II was just something that I read about and saw pictures of in books. But now you read about this and you see pictures of it all over social media. You turn on the TV and you see the same sort of present destruction that Europe only knew at the end of the war. I never thought that I would live in this day, but here we are. And so in verse 7, a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right side. You see again the duplication and reduplication. You will only look with your eyes. It will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you. No scourge come near your tent. And then we come to those beautiful lines that are meant to give us and do encouragement, strength, and hope that are taken from us if we would release them, stolen and twisted by none other than Satan himself. For this is the Gospel lesson when Satan says, Will God command his angels concerning you and guard you in all your ways? You have only to cast yourself off the pinnacle of the temple. Satan says to the Lord. It's right here in Psalm 91. And so what God intends for you to have is an encouragement and an assurance the devil would try to steal and twist so that you might fail to trust God or that you might put God to the test. That is not what this passage is intended for. It's not intended that you might see whether or not God will be faithful, but rather that you might hear that God can be trusted and that you can rest in his promise. That's what verse 12 and 11 mean. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. When I was younger, I used to hear this passage and think to myself, whoa, I better be careful never to try to uh, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the devil on quoting Scripture. He probably knows it better than me. I suspect that he knows it better than most folks. But that doesn't mean that we should set aside the Scripture, that we should let it be take, taken from us or stolen away from us. We cede no ground to the devil. We give over none of what God has blessed us with to Satan. If you look in your hymnals, right, there's... Um, there's a, there's a lot of beautiful and wonderful hymns in the hymnal. Probably my most favorite of all is hymn number 666. Why would you ever give a hymn, a, a hymn the best one of all, number 666? It's the sign of the beast in case you don't know that, right? Why would you ever do that? Especially my favorite hymn of, of all time, What Wondrous Love Is This? Who in their right mind would, would equate the two? Well, it's not an equation. It's rather, instead, uh, that we resist, that we fight, that we cede nothing to evil. We give nothing over to the devil. And I've got all these beautiful hymns. Well, as you number one through 850-something or other, you're going to come to number 666. Fine, so be it. Put the best one that you can at hymn number 666 because we give nothing over to evil, the devil, or sin. We cede no ground. And so it is that we come to the end of Psalm 91, where we, re we read in verse 14, God promises, those who love me I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them with long life. I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. God will do these things. God will protect. God will watch over. God will shelter. 
God will abide because of his faithfulness, not ours. God will do these things for those who call upon him, who know his name. Now, I suppose you might say, as a thousand fall at one side and ten thousand at the other side, O Lord, how is it that you will protect me? Or how is it more importantly that you will protect your people in Ukraine? How is it that we can take this assurance of your protection and put it together with Jesus' command to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us? To answer that question very concisely, to show love to our enemies means to pray for their welfare. It means to pray that their ungodly, unholy, and violent actions would stop, that they would just stop, right? That God would change their hearts, that God would renew a right spirit within them. King Solomon, David's son, when he ascends to the throne, when he is coronated, when he's crowned, prays to God not for the death and lives of his enemies. No, instead, he does not ask either for riches or long life for himself, but instead he asks God for wisdom to rule this great nation of Israel. He says, for who am I? I am but a child. I don't even know my right hand from my left, Solomon says. How can I rule this, your people? And God replies, because you have not asked for the life of your enemies, nor for riches, nor for long life, I give you that which you have not asked for, long life and riches. When Jesus instructs us to pray for our enemies and those who persecute us, as Christians, we ask God to change their hearts. And if that is not possible, we ask him to stay their hands. And if that is not possible, we ask and pray that God protect the soldiers of Ukraine so that they might live, yes, in freedom, but also, too, in peace. And how is it that we compare Psalm 91 with the death and destruction that is so common and prevalent in the world. We would do well and we come to understand its meaning if we remember also the words that Jesus says, do not fear those who can kill the body but have no power over the soul. You need have no fear of them. They can do nothing to you. I will tell you who to fear, Jesus continues, fear him who after he has killed has authority to cast the soul into hell. But I tell you even this still, Jesus declares, are you not of more value than the sparrows, the birds of the air that are sold two for a penny? Because if God cares for the birds of the air and the grass of the field, do you not think that he will much more care for you? And so when we hear Jesus say, do not fear those who can kill the body and have no power over the soul, we remember that Jesus himself promises the resurrection to life everlasting. It is not as though he is promising that nothing bad will ever happen to you in this present life. We know from history and from the witness of Scripture itself that terrible, awful things happen to God's people time and again. But what Jesus promises is that he always has the last word. That word is life. That word is resurrection. That word is peace. He has done these things for you and prepared these things for you as surely as he prepares a place for you at a great wedding banquet. So do not lose hope even under persecution. And when we think to ourselves, boy, life is confusing, discouraging, when we know not where to turn or what next to do, remember that Jesus says, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your own blood. So do not be discouraged, but strengthen yourselves 
Remember the promises God has made to you. Cling to them. Do not them, let them be stripped or stolen away from you. For this is God's blessing, God's gift, that whenever you would call out to him, he understands and answers and hears. Cry out to the Lord. He is not far away. Peace be with you, brothers and sisters in Christ. And amen. Let's rise up as we confess our Christian faith in song. Join our hearts in prayer for God's people and all the world over in their need. O Lord God, we ask that you would bring a swift cessation to hostilities and bloodshed in Ukraine. O Lord, we pray for President Putin that you would give him a new and righteous heart. O Lord, we ask your blessings upon the people of Russia. We ask, O Lord, that you bless especially the people of Ukraine. O Lord, protect and watch over them. Let there be an end to warfare. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those who have been wounded, who suffer, who are hungry and cold. O oh Lord, bless the efforts of Lutheran World Relief and all aid organizations who seek to come to the aid of the innocent. O oh Lord, be with the aged and the young. O oh Lord, watch over them and surround them with your holy wings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Especially we give into your care. Our brothers and sisters here in this place, we ask you, you watch over Morgan, Ron, Roger, Scott, Dean, and Kay. O oh Lord, pour out your Spirit upon Norm and Kevin, Dwayne, Doug, Denny, Steve, and Dennis. O Lord, surround with your holy angels Sandy and Chase, Judy, Adam, and Amy. Give the blessing of your Holy Spirit to Keith and Todd, Diane, Todd, Christy, Sharon, and Stu. Be faithful, O Lord, for all the promises that you have made to Ron, Dieter, Tyra, Lily, 
Dylan, Cade, and Moni. And bless especially, O Lord, those whom we name now in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, for these your people, for these your children, call them by name and bless them in every way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, O Lord, for the gentle rain that comes down upon the earth. We pray that you would bless those who have suffered, however, with storms and hardship and tornadoes. O Lord, let there be peace, not just amongst us as persons, but through all creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands now, O Lord, we pray for all. We commend them to your care, trusting in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. I invite you to share Christ's peace with one another. We give you thanks, Almighty God, for all that you have blessed us with, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love, for we ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Friends in Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then, after, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering our Lord, together let us pray as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now the table is set, all is prepared, and our Lord says, come and dine. And so regardless of what congregation you might ordinarily attend, you are welcome at the table. Please be seated, coming forward at the direction of your ushers.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray in your mercy that you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join in our last song this morning. Jesus Messiah
and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. All our hope is in you. All our hope is in you. All the glory to you, God. The light of the world. Jesus Messiah.